Hello everyone and welcome back to the App Builder creation videos where we're continuing to outline how you can use Fine and the Go programming language to build the main features of a low-code app solution. If you missed some earlier videos, I recommend that you head to our YouTube channel and find the Creating an App Builder playlist to catch up. In the previous video, we extended the widget editing capabilities to add and remove items from a container. That was super useful. Hopefully that you've used that now in some of your projects. But today the topic is a little more visual. We're going to preview the user interface on a mobile device. Obviously, we're not going to actually plug in mobile devices and communicate over the cable. But instead, we're going to use the preview capability we already have to simulate different output devices. But I've got some good news first that I can share. Some code in this project in the unreleased.go file we didn't cover before because it was using features of Fine that hadn't actually made it into the public repository yet. Those are now in the develop branch ready for the 2.5 release series that are coming in the following months. So let's have a quick look at how these features come together to make it possible to build the application that we're looking at. I'm just switching back to our Visual Studio Code and the GUI.go file. Inside the make GUI function, what I'm going to show you here is this, a new container called theme override. That takes an object parameter, which is the canvas object that we want to have a different theme to the object around it, and the theme that we're going to ask it to take on. So this isn't quite theming one widget to look different to all of others, but it's marking one area of our application to look different to the rest of it, which as you can see is super helpful in this project. You might find it really useful in things like a word processor or some um, visual representation of uh, object state or structure that you're building in your application where you're really looking to have one section that is clearly demonstrating uh, different uh, you know, rendering or, or output to the rest of your application. So we set it up using this new container and we use this themer in place of the object so that it can then encapsulate and take on the new theme. And in what was the unreleased Go file, we've renamed it to preview.go. In here, we have this set preview theme method that previously wasn't covered. And you can see now it's taking a couple of parameters, the theme override container, which is what we're going to control, the theme that we want to apply to it, and also uh, the background, which is the part of the window not included in the override, which I'll cover later. And you can see what we do when we want to set a new theme. We just update the theme on this container and call refresh. It's that simple. That's going to make sure that the colors, the sizes, and the icons and so forth match internally to be uh, consistent with this other theme that we specified. We also manage this background rectangle because it's not a widget it doesn't pull information from our theme. So we need to manually set the fill color using a color lookup for the theme that's been passed in. Hopefully that all makes sense and you'll be using this new theme override container in maybe one of your applications if you think it would be useful. That, I think, is really the only thing that's changed since our last video. You might have noticed there was one or two visual flickers around the preview. Those have all been ironed out. It was uh, a small change in the way that this container was being used. The code has been updated subtly, the bug's gone away, and we had some very slight uh, changes in how the UI layout was prepared as well, but nothing really that's worth going into today. However, if you would like to know more, we have a repository that you can follow. It's the Fission Tutorials repository in the Fine Labs organization. And you can follow along with all of these episodes here and see the changes that we make between videos. But let's get started on this mobile preview. I'm going to jump back over to our GUI.go file. And again, inside Make GUI, we've got quite a lot here. I'm going to start factoring the code out. But I want to start down where we are managing the preview area, approximately from here, where we have a another to do about data binding, which is going to be the subject of, a, of another video. Um, but we have this select desktop and this iPhone 15 Max was a placeholder 
I'm going to actually just change this um, because we're going to be working with a generic um, smartphone um, widget to do the preview of our mobile application. This picker is going to control which visual components are on screen. Um, and so we're going to need to put a little bit more work into how that's structured. As you saw way back up here, we're constructing this thing called themer, which is our theme override. So that's the core of what is being previewed. And where that is used further down is where we need to start working. We've got this component here called inner, and it is containing the background of the window and the thing that we're theming. And that is being inserted into an inner window, which is actually another widget that's coming in um, Find 2.5. We've been using it for a while. This is basically our desktop preview. And we're going to want to switch this out um, with our mobile preview. That's contained by this multi here. And you can see how our content is composed of a gray background and then our multi and the picker that helps us choose. So instead of just saying um, this multi uh, window is what our UI is, we're going to want to switch it out with the mobile preview. So we can start by saying, actually this is called desktop. So the desktop is one of the things that we want to include, but also we want to be able to switch to a mobile preview. So we can just um, uh, pop a new container here. And what are we going to do? Well, the mobile device is going to be centered in the space that we have. Um, so that's a good use for a new center, a new center there. And we're going to want to probably just make a new mobile preview. Like I said, I'm going to start factoring things out of this method rather than putting more in here. So our mobile preview um, for now, perhaps let's just mock this up. I think that we should make better use of this preview file, which was previously the unreleased. So let's just put that in here, a new uh, function, and that's going to return uh, a canvas object probably very Generic should be fine, uh, I think. Yeah, let's give this a go anyway. Um, <clears throat> and let's, for now, just put a, rect a rectangle Yeah, Canvas. A new rectangle. Um, let's make this a, a black colored rectangle. Actually, rather than just that, uh, let's give it a minimum size as well. Something generic for now. New size uh, 150. Oh, no, that's horizontal. So 100 wide, 150 tall. So simple placeholder. That is going to represent we're showing the mobile. And we're going to now work to uh, switch these around. Oh, goodness, these pop ups are appearing everywhere. So we're going to want to hide and show the desktop and mobile view, which is what we're going to need to do inside our um, picker select logic. So let's just move them up here. Our default is desktop. So let's make sure that that is set up correctly. Um, we need to know what string has been selected. So we can then switch on that. Uh, in the case that it is desktop, uh, which is the default. Oh, no, wrong syntax there. We're going to want to um, hide mobile and show the desktop. It is already shown, but this will be executed later as well. And in other cases, which we'll just use default for at the moment, we will show the mobile view and we will hide the desktop view. So nothing particularly clever yet. We also want to set up the default state. So after we said desktop is the default, um, we probably want to hide the mobile view. 
and they're both going to be included in this stack container. So one on top of the other, and whichever is visible will be shown on screen. Cool. Um, that probably should be everything. Let's take this one step at a time, because we're working through a few steps. And let's make sure that this is behaving as we expect before we start moving the preview between these different windows. So we'll open the terminal again. Ah, with a positive message. I would highly recommend some kind of positivity at the beginning of your terminal. We can do this. So let's just go and run this project and see where we've got to. Um, oh yes, there is a, a little warning came in here. If you're using the latest Go on the latest Mac OS, there is a warning. It's peculiar, we're still trying to track it down, but it's not going to be a problem. I'm going to open a recent project, X2, I think is what we were using before. And if I open main.gui, we have our window, which we can resize, drag around in desktop view. And if we then switch to the smartphone view, we have our rectangle. Excellent. And if we switch back to desktop, things come back as you'd expect. So there you go. We have our switching ability by hiding and showing elements inside that stack container. But obviously, what we really want to do is see this visual content in our mobile display. So there's a bit more work to do. Before we get into how the mobile is going to work with its preview, let's look at the additional logic to move the preview around. So the desktop container, which we've had before, sets up a window, and the window has some content, which is currently called inner. And if we work through that, the inner has our themed area and the tapper, which is the, the widget selector that we're working in. That content there is really the crux of our preview. So let's just take that out and make it a new variable and call that preview. I think that should be grand. Um, it's not used yet because we'll use it here. But actually, um, we're going to want to be able to move it around. So um, do, do we want to pop it here? Well, we could. Um, yeah, actually, that, that would be OK. Um, it's appearing over this background. The background here is going to be confusing because this is actually um, the background for our desktop. So let's just call it that desktop BG, and now there's no confusion. So here we've set up inner, which is the desktop background and the preview. Let's um, rename this to be clearer and call this uh, desktop holder. Okay, so now the inner window has a name and it's got desktop holder inside it. That's pretty straightforward, I think. So now we're going to want also to create a mobile holder Uh, a new stack again. Um, we're probably, yes, we're going to want uh, also a background behind our application for mobile. Um, we'll see why a little bit down the road, uh, but we're going to put a, a, a frame around it for the device Chrome, but then that extends outside of the usually used application space. Uh, mobile BG, and actually we don't need to drop the preview in there for now because we are just leaving it empty. Um, the mobile BG is going to be a rectangle similar to the desktop one. We're keeping them separate because they're going to be managed um, to be different sizes embedded in different uh, devices, so we might as well keep them separate. We have less to lay out. Mobile holder is then unused. In our mobile preview here, we will pass in the mobile holder that uh, will position inside this uh, rectangle. Of course, there's no inside a rectangle, so let's just add some code. Canvas object, so that's the content that we're passing in. Um, instead 
instead of rectangle alone, this is, let's call it, I, I suppose, our frame. I suppose I could have could have done a refactor there. Um, anyhow, uh, instead of just returning the frame, we're going to want to return a, a container so we can manage multiple objects. Uh, new uh, mobile layout is something we're going to need to create to make this work, I think. And we'll pass in the frame and the object. So that's the, the object is going to be the stack container that will have our preview and does have a background. It should, I think this seems like it should work out okay. We need to make a new type for the mobile layout. Um, type mobile layout and that's a struct. Currently um, has nothing. So we're going to want to tell it what the frame is and what the content is. just makes it a little bit easier to manage. And then uh, function. We need to implement the two layout um, functions. I can't remember exactly the order, but if we go to container.news definition, it's going to say this takes a layout. And we can just, because I'm lazy and I can't remember the keyboard shortcut, copy them out from the interface. So we will need to implement this layout. Not a problem at all. And we will implement a min size. These are both attached to our layout. Um, we're not going to be mutating the layout, I don't think. So we can just leave it um, without a pointer type. Mo oh, mobile layout. Oh, goodness, I'm typing that in the wrong place, that's why it can't help me. All the layout. layout. These need a fine dot, because we just copied it out of the package source. One day, I'll learn the keyboard shortcuts, and I can help communicate them as well. The, the min size, uh, that's going to determine how big the, the mobile screen is in our preview. I've got some notes here that say um, that a good size for that is going to be uh, 260 wide and 480 high. Obviously, some of these numbers just come with a bit of trial and error, but don't worry about what device you're running it on because these fine coordinates are going to work across any uh, platform in the same way. And then we will implement a small bit of layout code. We actually don't need to know what objects are being requested because we've um, taken a reference earlier. The size there uh, is going to be needed. So our frame, the L dot frame, wants to be resized to be the full size. That's pretty straightforward um, size. The content wants to be um, inset, I suppose. Um, let's just pop some numbers in here. Uh, oh, content dot move. So, new position, uh, let's make a little pad, um, call it four. So a new offset, that is the padding. And then we will also resize it. And that, oh, we don't need a new size. What we want to do is to work with the size and subtract um, the padding times two um, so that it's in uh, yeah <laughs> in the set on both sides uh, so pad times two there are optimizations to be made here um, but I'm going to uh, iterate on this quite a bit in the next uh, in the coming code so for now that should be grand and that should be a new um, size Actually, there's a little helper here. We could subtract uh, width height because then we avoid needing to, to construct that size object. Uh, okay, so we've got a very simple layout. We need to know what the frame and the content are. So our mobile layout here is just going to be told the frame is frame. 
and the content is the object that's passed in. So we have a really simple definition of a mobile layout, and we should be able to see that in action. But before we try, let's just make sure that everything is in order here. We've made the mobile preview, we're passing in the mobile holder. We've got the desktop holder that's being passed to the inner window. And that one contains the preview. Um, that's not at the beginning. We've got a background behind both of them, so the preview will be in position one of our objects slice. And when um, we're switching between the two, we're going to want to change that. So desktop, it wants to return to the current state, uh, which is where the um, desktop holder objects slice is uh, a slice of canvas objects, which contains the um, back, um, desktop background and the preview. And when that's the case, the mobile holder um, objects, uh, to be fair, it, it could actually be empty, but for consist just keeping the backgrounds in place, let's just make sure it has the mobile background there. So that updates those two containers. Let's just uh, refresh them. Uh, let's do the refresh after the slices are set so that the preview doesn't accidentally happen to be in two places at once. That could be a bad thing. Desktop holder dot refresh and mobile holder dot refresh. And let's just take that chunk of code into the default, which is our mobile setup. So in that case, the preview wants to be in the mobile holder. And I think that's the only change. So now we're moving where the preview is and then refreshing and our previous work to hide and show should uh, well continue to function. So let's run that again. There we go. Okay, so um, again, we'll open that recent project and open the, the user interface. This is the desktop preview is as you'd expect still working because actually we didn't change the initial state there. We'll switch to the smartphone and we have a black frame around um, the same content as before. That is still interacting because we included the tapper on top of the preview as the content that we would move around and the desktop is still working as well. This is a good start. Now, obviously there's a lot of work to do on the mobile uh, UI, which we will move on to, but I think probably the first thing that we want to do is to make this look a little bit more like it's going to be on our smartphone device. Now, if you've used a Find App on a phone, or if you're familiar with um, the, the software on mobile phones, there's a, a scaling factor that's applied. The widgets are all going to have smaller text and be closer together because we hold the phone much closer to our face. So the size of widgets for desktop looks great, but actually um, it's not going to be identical on the mobile phone. So let's look at how we can do that. The good news is it's super easy. We already have our theme which is part of this preview. We created the themer, and this is the theme override container. It's using already a custom theme. We made this editable theme that allows us to tap around the UI and change how the theme looks. And so we're storing into this various custom elements. And if you remember the earlier video when we added the switch between light and dark variants, that's being remembered. And what we can do is actually just add a new field here, multiple. And this is going to be a factor that is applied to all of our size values, if that makes sense. So when the theme returns, it's going to um, look at this and see if there should be a factor applied um, before it's rendered. So. What do we need to do with this multiple to make it work? Well, first of all, we need to respect it. 
and it's going to be used in the size implementation. So we've managed color before. We need a new function that determines how sizes are interpreted. I covered before, this delegates to an existing theme, so the sizes are passed directly on. So let's overwrite that functionality. So we will add this um, new method to our editable theme called size, and that, similarly to color, takes a size name, so a theme size name. We don't have a variant this time because size doesn't vary. And that's going to return a float32, which is what all the size types are in fine. And in this case, we can simply return the value that the theme would have multiplied by our overriding factor. So we can get the default by asking for the theme that we delegate to for its size, for this named uh, type of size and multiply it by our multiple. Now, of course, as a number, it's going to default to zero, and we do not want to return a number multiplied by zero. So let's just set up a sensible default here, which would be one. So we're passing the size directly through. And to make use of this, we go back to our use of the theme and look for where we are switching between different types of preview here. So our implementation is going to set the value of that. So the theme.multiple for desktop is one. And then for mobile is a fairly aggressive reduction in size. 0 0.6, I think, should work nicely. And much like if we were changing the theme of our container, we need to refresh to make sure that our theme change gets um, reflected. So we will do that and quickly pop that in there as well. Now with that subtle change, we should see that there is a, a noticeable difference with how our application is going to render the mobile preview. We'll open X2 and go here. Again, this is our desktop as before. And let's switch to the smartphone. And now you can see our widgets have been scaled down. This is a fairly realistic approximation of how it would be rendered on a mobile device. Of course, there's, there's a lot more to do, uh, but it's a great start. Now, clearly the other main factor is that phones aren't sharp edged. They don't go all the way up to the top or the bottom either. So let's see if we can spend a little bit of time making it a more realistic device. So we have, I think we've probably just, yeah, we've probably done with our GUI and the preview code. Although I'm just thinking we've missed something along the way. Yeah. Ah, I do. Prize to anybody who spotted that this had been slipped through, um, but we could um, change our background color. So if we go to our smartphone and uh, change the theme's background color to, I don't know, let's pick red to be um, super obvious, it's not, uh, it's not updating. Our desktop has a new red background but our smartphone doesn't. Now, just to be clear, you know, the, the preview is actually still working. If we change the button background, there you go, it reflects it. It's just the background color of the device. That's what came to mind, because if we look at our set preview theme code, we're passing in a background. That's for the desktop. So let's um, change the variable name here as well to reflect what it became in our other code. It was the desktop background. But this time, we'll pass in also the mobile background. So we will update both of them to have the right background color. That's the desktop, and we will also do the same for mobile. 
glad that sprung to mind because it could have been a peculiar debug later if we couldn't figure out what was going on. So there's a, a couple of calls here um, where we've passed the um, backgrounds through. Those are really long names, but I'm already getting bored of typing them. So let's just go BG1, BG2, where it doesn't matter. We can pass them through as a pair. I suspect there'll be some more refactoring to be done here later on, uh, where we encapsulate these in essentially custom widgets instead of a load of canvas objects passed through to a container. Um, and then here we will uh, set mobile BG passed into the BG2 field. Okay, Spidey Sense feeling a little bit better. Let's just run that one more time before we move on. Recent projects again. Let's just jump straight to uh, the mobile device um, and pick our background color. Yellow. Okay, good. That's all working. And if we then uh, maybe pick our foreground, let's go, ooh, purple on yellow, perhaps. There we go. Okay, so that's all working fully. We can put a bit of work now into the chrome, I suppose, the borders of our smartphone. So we're done here now, and we're, I think, done with the editable theme. It's just in the preview that we have got some and some work to do now. So, first of all, it's blocky. It's, it's square corner, rectangular type of phone. It doesn't look right. So let's add some curves. First of all, let's yep, yeah, let's do that. So um, our frame is going to want to have um, the curved edge. So let's make sure that we set that up. So let's um, start by applying a corner radius. Uh, we don't need this min size anymore actually because we're using the layout to determine size, best practice. Frame dot uh, corner radius, let's set that to um, 32. We're currently setting the frame as the bottom because we just put our UI on top to hide the fact it was a black rectangle. Let's instead um, set it to be a transparent rectangle, but with a, um, a colored um, stroke. So the uh, frame of stroke color would be the black color. And black. I will need a stroke rate, um, stroke width uh, to specify how wide to draw the line. Um, so let's pop that about um, six for now. And with that change, we can use our frame as more of a frame and overlay it onto the rest of our Chrome. So the, the frame is, is now basically framing the, the UI better. That's grand. Um, so we've got our curved outside edge. Um, we will want to apply the same to our um, background or we're going to get corners sticking out beyond the frame. So let's just, although we didn't create it here, let's just configure the background. So the uh, mobile BG was passed in, but it's inside the um, uh, object, which is a, a container. So we can say that we know it's a container. We could. I mean, we could specify that it is in the, in the parameters being passed in. Actually, that's, actually let's, let's enforce it. Let's do that. Um, the container's being passed in. We could change it to be the content and the background as well. Hmm. I don't know which I prefer, actually. Doesn't matter. So we could say the object, the um, item in zero position is the background. So the mobile uh, BG dot corner radius. Oh, I need to say that it's a rectangle, don't I? Uh, can first stop rectangle, corner radius, there we go. Um, so we'll set that to 32 as well. We don't need to do anything else because that is a solid filled rectangle. If the corner radius is matched, then the curvature will be underneath each other. And with the frame being on top, um, we're going to get a nice clean separation. If it had been underneath, then uh, we would sort of have probably not much black 
visible. Um, yeah, so now we can actually just keep them at the same um, the same layout. I think that will, will probably work okay. But let's, again, okay, one step at a time. We've got the outline. Um, let's also change the content so that it's inset more appropriately. Um, <clears throat> so in, ah yes, in, in layout, we're currently insetting by a square amount. Yeah. So instead, uh, instead of that, so we've got a radius of 32, right? So really we want to come in um, 32 from the top and the bottom, not four. So the content is going to be moved um, by X is four, uh, top is um, 32. Let's just let's just code that in, um, and the resize, the height is going to be less 64. Two lots of 32. Yeah, so that will um, pull it in in that dimension. I think I think that should probably create the visual effect of being inset by a, um, a, a top and bottom with radius. Let's let's have a quick look. Of course, if I was working from a design spec, I could make a, a unit test or a design file that showed how it should look, and we could avoid running the application each time. Okay, so not quite what I was expecting. What's going on? The radius is right, the inset. Ah, we're insetting the content and the background because it was passed together. So it's obviously not what we're looking for. I said, Maybe we should pass the objects in differently. Perhaps I should listen to myself, much like you lovely people are doing at the moment. And instead of saying both of them being passed in together, we're, we're going to have the border, sorry, the background and the content separately. So the object will be um, the content and the um, background. Oh, let's just object background, find up canvas objects. So the mobile background is going to just be BG because we're passing it in separately. We don't, oh, we don't need that. Um, the, oh, the BG, we could, mm. let's actually be good and use all sorts of typing here and say this background must be a canvas dot rectangle and avoid potential casting issues and also the potential issue of sending items in the wrong order. Then, when we're setting up our content, um, we don't just want to pass in the object. Well, actually we do, um, but we're, we need to reconstruct it so the background and the object are both used. So we're missing a BG parameter. So let's just tell our layout that there is a background. Our container, will want to um, know that as well. So the background goes underneath the object, which is underneath the frame. We have a background for our layout. Yep. And when we are laying out, the background and the frame now have the same size. That, because we're using a stroke width overlay, um, means that the background can be the same size as the rectangle that is uh, surrounding it. Size. Uh, that should be correct. We'll just need to go back, hence the red color here, to adjust how we're sending the parameters in. And here we will, instead of sending in the holder, oh, we need to split these apart. So we've got the background and the content is sometimes not present. So we can't say sometimes this isn't here, we need to pass in uh, the holder, essentially, is now going to be only for, the, only for the content. Does that make sense? So instead of including the background in this holder, we will pass it through separately. The mobile holder, uh, ah, <laughs> a failure of type there has reminded me that was the wrong order. So glad we did that. The holder is being passed in here. 
and now this is just empty, ready to receive the preview. So the mobile holder no longer includes the mobile background here or here. So that is there. Um, we could indeed do the same for the, the desktop. Let's keep these consistent. So the desktop holder either does have a preview or not. When it is being set up back here, we need to make sure that the background is um, used elsewhere. So instead of including the background in the holder, it's just the preview. And here, instead of sending the holder into the window, we say use the background and put the preview um, inside it. Sorry, that's a lot of words to describe just moving around how pa things are passed through, but you should see, firstly, that the desktop is exactly as before, but that the mobile, the smartphone, okay, well, the background's in the right place, <laughs> it's with the right extent, but our content is gone. So why don't we have our mobile preview anymore? Good question. We are going here, we are specifying that the mobile holder contains the preview. So it's probably in our preview code. This is our mobile holder. It's being sent through as the content. Uh, it's being drawn into the container underneath the frame above the background. Um, and then the content is being moved and resized to be inside like it was before. Content is the right size, it's in the right order, it's being returned in the container. Hmm. Maybe it's something about visibility. No. Uh, there's something not being set up like I think it has here. Um, so this mobile holder, a stack container is going to put things on top of each other, expand them to fill. That should definitely be working. The mobile holder is um, just being updated, refreshed, has the preview passed in. Yeah, that should all be working, and this is definitely containing it. So maybe, yeah, we're going back here. Our content, it just doesn't seem to be being included. Hmm, well, this is very strange. Let's use this debug mode to see if we can figure out if it's being laid out strangely or if it's just not there. Um, it just takes a little while longer to turn on all the all the debug flags. Um, if you can navigate around things being hidden behind um, duplicate labels, it is quite powerful. So we can again tap here. That's our um, all the parts that make up our window. And I'm going to switch to the smartphone. So it is there. You see, we have the, the rectangles that are the, um, the frame in the background. This one, oh, that's the holder, not, not the widget. Yes, the widget's not there. I, can't, I must have not passed it where I thought I did. Let's, if we compare it to, oh, right. Okay, so I did something very bad. Uh, what does it say? A stack overflow. Okay, so when I switched back to desktop, we must have put a widget inside itself. Does, does that make sense? How, how could we have... Oh, yeah, okay, well, the terminal's not happy either. What have I done? Um, so we have the desktop holder and mobile holder just having the preview set in it and nothing else. So the, the holders must, I must have broken the holder somehow. So the mobile holder is an empty stack being passed in and just positioned. The desktop holder, ah, look at that. I did, I did screw this up. So when we set up the initial state for the desktop holder, it's not holding the preview. It is the preview. This should say, um, put this in a new stack container so it can be taken out. So what happened there was we switched to the mobile screen, but it was still, the preview was attached to the desktop window. We tried to put it in a new place, but a widget can't be in two different places at the same time. It just doesn't work. Um, 
I mean, consider a variable having two different values at the same time. It's, it's not, not going to go too well. So let's, um, yeah, let's just, let's just run it in debug again, just in case. But hopefully we should see this time um, the widget and all its dimensions appear correctly. So again, that's the desktop. We'll drop over to the smartphone. Here we go. So now you can see the contents appeared, the padding, the buttons all there. And, and if we switch back to desktop, it's not trying to reinsert something inside itself, creating that, that really weird recursion. Okay, so that's, that's great. All working. That's laid out. As you can see, actually these lines really help. Um, our inset is inside the curvature. The 32 and the 32 you know, work together as you'd expect. Um, let's just see if we can add a little bit more you know, design to this so it doesn't feel kind of like an empty rounded rectangle. Now I think it's pretty standard that mobile devices are going to have a camera, um, sensor block at the top, it might be it might be over to the left, it might be a, an inset, it might be a chunk out of the top edge of it, but essentially they're they're tending to have colour up the edges if not all the way over the top. So let's generically make some kind of island or um, chunk taken out of the top and um, there's usually an indicator at the bottom I don't know if they're filling the space because it's hard to get icons all the way to the bottom of the screen, but something that helps with app switching or indicating there's a menu to be used. Um, so let's see if we could just add both of those features to our preview UI. And I think that, that should feel uh, like we're pretty far through making something that's indicative of a mobile device. So we are going to have, I guess the bottom one would be a uh, handle is uh, can new rectangle again um, and this is going to be a grey colour I think um, we'll just pass it a, a, a y value of 66 hex so if you don't if you're not familiar with the grey colour y means it's applied to all of the channels because Essentially, a grey colour is where red, green and blue are all the same. So that's our handle. Um, and we'll make another thing um, called the... Oh, I don't know if I can call it an island, because I think that's possibly been trademarked in this context. So let's just call it an inset. Um, that's another new rectangle. Um, this one's going to match the frame, so that's a black rectangle. Uh, pretty straightforward there. They're both going to want um, some corner radiuses as well. I'm going to throw some magic numbers in here, uh, adjust them if you if you think differently. Um, this is going to be iterated over time as we refine things, but just to get it working today, let's put a fairly average size of radius on the inset at the top. The handle is going to be much thinner and we'll position it to be quite long, so that's um, got a corner radius, let's set that to two um, and we'll get that position set up right. Uh, we'll want to pass them into our layout, we'll also want to make sure they get displayed. So over the background and over our content, because at some point the content's going to slide behind these features but we want it all inside and therefore underneath the frame. So we'll pop them in here, um, inset and um, handle, and also pass them in. So I'll make new fields, inset. I'm not feeling very imaginative here, and we already thought too much about what these should be called, so I'll reuse the names. I may come back with some inspiration later. Um, let's. Let's go with the rectangle thing here, actually. Inset and handle are all rectangles. Like I said before, let's use type as much as possible to avoid possible mistakes. Uh, so then the min size doesn't change. We just need to do a little bit of layout with these features that we have added. Um, 
So, how? We need to get the positioning right, and the positioning needs to be centred. And the centre position depends, because we're calculating top left, we need to know how wide things are. So let's figure the size, and then apply that to the position and the, um, well, the size to get the other position. So, inset size. Uh, find a new size. I'm going to uh, make this um, 80 and uh, 30. Let's see how that works out. Then, with this, we can um, move our inset. Oh, sorry, that's l.inset.move. So that is going to. <laughs> New position. We're going to want to put that at the top of the screen. Um, oh, that's not the x, that's the y. So the x coordinate. So this is where we need to know the size to figure out the position. It is the width halved minus the size halved. So that's size dot width minus inset size dot width all half. I think that's that's a quicker operation than rather than dividing both of them and then subtracting. Oh and then we resize it. Inset dot resize um, inset size. Cool. That's fairly straightforward. Um, let's just do the same with the handle. So handle size and this is going to be wider but shorter. Uh, so that how big would oh let's go look okay, at 120 wide um, and uh, size let's go for four let's see if that works out. Um, why have I put new size in there twice? I think it's been a long day. So <laughs> L.handle. We'll move that again using the same logic um, as above but with these new values. So it is size.width minus handle size.width. Wait, not height. Uh, over 2. Uh, this time um, we're not going to want to move it to the top at 0. That's no good at all. Um, we're going to want to take the height minus. Um, how far off the bottom it's going to be. So that's size dot height minus, um, we want it, I suppose, to appear um, in the middle of the space. So that's like 32, that would be minus 16, which is half of the 32. Um, but also, we have a width of 4. There's got to be a nice glamorous way to calculate this. Um, I'll probably shift this to some variables that could be configured, but for now that should be correct. Um, then l.handle.resize is going to be the handle size. Again, a lot of words to describe what should be a relatively pleasing, straightforward uh, output. Let's run this, maybe. Maybe for the last time, maybe we need to do some tweaking. X2 project in mobile mode. Oh, that's too close to the bottom, but it's so nearly right. Um, the curve radius, the size looks okay. The inset's pretty reasonable. Okay, I'm going to bring that up. Mm, another four, I think. Let's bring that up. So that is the handle move height minus 14. Oh, you know what? <laughs> the math was wrong. What was going on in my head was right. It was the offset is 32. We want it in the middle, which is 16, um, but it's got a height of four. So we take two off, but I took two off. So it went further down. I should have added two because we're subtracting from the height. Hopefully this is making sense to you. I'm sorry if you're screaming at this um, video saying, ah, oh, you got it wrong, you got it wrong. I think we've got it right now. Let's just have a look. Um, okay. 
I'm liking that we have our little handle, we've got our inset on the top, and we have our application and you can interact with the components. Okay, so there we have it. That's a pretty good layout. I can, I can believe that's an approximation of a mobile phone layout. We can still go and interact with our widgets, um, make whatever changes we want and see how it's going to reflect in a mobile context. I hope that you've enjoyed this as well. We've had a little challenge along the way. The layout took a little bit of tweaking and uh, we learned about putting more types parameters into your, uh, uh, into your function um, parameter list so that we don't make mistakes. Um, and when you're doing a refactoring, perhaps go a little bit slower, make sure that each of the things is updated along the way. But thanks for being on this journey with me. I hope that you're enjoying this series. If you want um, to get more involved, actually we're looking for early adopters or people to engage with the process. If you're interested in, in helping us out, head to fission.app where we are currently looking for people to feedback on, on some of the functionality and the priorities for taking it forward. Um, tap there, obviously watch live code if you want to watch more. Um, but if you go to sign up here, there's a couple of ways that you can get involved. So please do. Also watch out for um, our next video. So the next topic we're going to be looking at is um, how to do some uh, more work with the screens uh, panel, which actually has stayed d you know, down here for quite some time with a to-do message that is going to be uh, really useful to help interact in other ways with our widget hierarchy. So that's the next video, um, which will be coming uh, probably at some point in March. Do watch out. If you don't want to miss it, the best thing to do is to hit subscribe. Uh, so do that before you leave and you'll get a notification when the next video comes out. Thanks so much for joining me today and I will see you at the next one. Bye.